swarms of drones that can hit a thousand targets in 24 hours, integrate artificial intelligence, cyber war, and advanced computing weapons that are faster, more numerous, quicker kill chain, kill quicker than the enemy. And this has been put forward as the way to let China know we can beat you in a war. And so don't even think about doing anything that we disagree with. Our ability to innovate, change the game, and in the military sphere, to imagine, create, and master the future character of warfare. It's called the Replicator Initiative, and I want to tell you a bit about it. Pretty much every generation since we've had a large uh, military industry, there's been a new technological marvel that's been sold to the public. We must defend ourselves against this new and elemental force or be destroyed by it. Nuclear weapons were going to end war as we know it. In Vietnam, they had the electronic battlefield, which was going to find every Viet Cong in their place and take them out. Utilizing an electronic sensing or eavesdropping device, we are in effect bugging the battlefield. They were running hundreds of thousands of troops across the border, and this electronic battlefield detected none of them. It was a complete failure. Then there was the revolution in military affairs. It's called network-centric warfare, linking troops, tanks, jet fighters, battleships, satellites, radar, someday even unmanned bombers and vehicles to fight wars digitally. And then came Iraq and Afghanistan, and they were being defeated by improvised explosive devices, not knowing what they were doing in the culture of the country, or even which side the people were on that they were fighting amidst. With Replicator, we're beginning with All Domain Attritable Autonomy, or ADA2, to help us overcome the PRC's advantage in mass. More ships, more missiles, more forces. But this is different. This technology is going to work. It's going to be quick. Uh, it's going to you know, get us the edge against China. But um, rarely does it work out that way. The new Joint Strike Fighter being built by Lockheed Martin is the most recent development in building weapon systems for network-centric warfare. You know, the F-35 was supposed to be both a technological marvel and a new blueprint for how to build an affordable aircraft. And it's been under development for 23 years. If, if, the, if the Lockheed Martin built the F-35, we only can, only 29% of them are fully operationally capable right now. We've all agreed that's failing. On the one hand, you have that example, and then you have the Deputy Secretary of Defense saying, We've set a big goal for Replicator, to field attritable autonomous systems at scale of multiple thousands in multiple domains within the next 18 to 24 months. Well, it seems to me there's a burden of proof there. I think the Replicator initiative has is, is got different benefits for different parts of the arms industry. There's these up-and-coming firms in emerging tech, like Palantir and Anderol, and there's venture capital firms like Andreessen Horowitz, people like Peter Thiel. They want to be the next generation big contractors on the block. They want to push Lockheed Martin, Raytheon aside because they're going to say we're quicker, we know the software, we know the technology. And then the big contractors are wary because they don't want their existing systems to get pushed out of the way. We still rely upon small numbers of large, exquisite, heavily manned aircraft, ships, and other platforms to project military power. Our goal must be of the ability to produce, operate, and sustain massive amounts of lower cost, more intelligent, more attritable military systems. So the possibility is the Pentagon will solve the problem by funding both. Of course, we still need the full complement of U.S. capabilities that we've invested in to remain combat credible today and into the future. But Replicator will galvanize progress in the too slow shift of U.S. military innovation to leverage platforms that are small, smart, cheap, and many. I think they're trying to sell it sort of the way they sold drone technology. It's going to be more focused, there'll be less collateral damage, fewer physical casualties, fewer troops at risk sort of antiseptic warfare. If we look at how AI is being used so far, it's a very, very bad sign. For example, when Israel was using AI-driven systems, they were using it to increase the number of targets they could hit in a given amount of time. So it was not at all about stopping civilian casualties. And of course, all these technologies, it's about your intent. It's a terrifying new development. It's not sort of a way to make warfare more humane. Either they're going to sell us a bill of goods, it's all going to fail, we're going to waste a lot of money and create a lot of tension, or They'll integrate it into the war machine, and then we'll have disastrous results. So the time to worry about that is now.